All right, so for those of you just tuning in, my name is Resins22, and today I'll be casting an expert Age of Empires 2 game from the King of the Desert tournament. As usual, my expert game commentaries will be focused on advanced tips and strategy analysis. If you're new to Age of Empires 2, then I highly encourage you to watch my tutorials and viewer coaching games. Links to all those in the video description below. I also live stream every week on Twitch, and if you follow me on Facebook and Twitter, that way you'll know when I'm live streaming next. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the game. So today's game is going to be round one, game four, between Stark playing as the purple Aztecs and Mr. Yo playing as the blue Vietnamese in the new AV2 HD edition expansions with the Voobly Volvo Kingdoms mod. The topic of this video is going to be primarily on early game build orders and how differences in villager distribution can help us know what strategy that player is going for. I'm also going to talk a little bit about why each strategy is chosen and all sorts of reactionary tips that should hopefully overall improve your level of play. Let's start by taking a quick look at the map, then the civilizations. And it looks like Ham Lucius has donated $12. He says, hey, uh, I actually just made a PayPal to make this rage donation. Your bot has insulted my honor. I'm watching your stream for a year and YouTube for a long time. Uh, well, thank you so much, Ham Lucius. Really appreciate it. Okay, so first I want to talk a little bit about the map. This is Arabia. And on Arabia, it's a fairly open map. There are two types of maps in Age of Empires 2, open and closed, and this one is a fairly difficult one to defend. And if we look at the way both players' maps are laid out, this is something I don't typically talk about in my lower-rated games, and I'm trying to differentiate my commentary between the two a little bit, is the, the map generation. So in this case, forward gold for both players. The gold always spawns a static distance away from your town center with a variable range, but the orientation can be different. In this case, forward gold from both means that I expect a fairly aggressive game from both players. This stone is also very vulnerable. These deer are vulnerable too, uh, and difficult to push. And if we look at Stark's base, I think uh, he's got a fairly safe wood line on the, on the left side over here, which he's going to drop his lumber camp on right about now. Uh, he has forward bushes. He could kind of do some sort of walling here, but it, it'll be a little bit tricky. Uh, at least, though, he has a wood line on the right side as well, but this one's fairly far away. His main stone is safe, though, and I think that this gives him the opportunity to actually drop down some towers. Now, I just realized two things. I'm gonna make a cut for uh, for YouTube purposes here because I don't have my in-game timer on. We're back into the game with the music on. Oh, yes. Less than three minutes in. Let's talk a little bit about these civilizations. So this is, again, Aztecs versus Vietnamese. So the Aztecs are primarily an aggressive civilization, and the Vietnamese, it's interesting because they don't have any early game eco bonuses. They're one of the few civs in the game that don't. And as a result, they tend to want the game to go late, but if they don't apply any aggression in the early game to mid game at all, then they typically fall apart at the seams and just you know get bullied really hard by players and sieves that have eco bonuses like the Aztecs, the reason that the plus five carrying capacity is such a strong eco bonus is that your villagers spend less time walking overall. And so the Vietnamese are going to have to do something. What do the Vietnamese have? Well, at least they know where Stark's base is. And this allows, you know, Mr. Yo to spend a lot of time scouting around his own base, now identifying that his deer are at the front, which are going to be very difficult for him to defend. And thank you so much, uh, Eamon, for subscribing. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. If we take a look at the way everyone's early game eco is set up, this is where I think you start to see something really interesting. So four on wood for start, but Yo only has three on wood. Now what does that generally mean? Well, three on uh, three on wood usually means you're going for something like scouts or like a faster uptime. Uh, it basically means a delayed barracks of some sort. So Mr. Yo is going for a delayed barracks. Uh, and a faster fuel time. And this is interesting because I think he's doing this since he's anticipating some sort of serious aggression from our Aztecs player, Stark. So he thinks that he needs to go for that really fast fuel and then um, he needs less wood as a result and more emphasis on the food resources. And here comes the Eagle Scout, actually. It looks like he's going to attempt to steal... Oh, God, he actually manages to lame a sheep successfully. He might be able to lame a second one as well, but... Ah, no, he converts it in time. Will he be able to get the lame successfully off? That is the question. 
since Mr. Yo knows where Stark's base is, he's actually able to keep his scout over here at the start, uh, able to defend the sheep, but he's taking a lot of damage on his scout, and he loses the sheep anyway. And this is a topic that I don't talk about at all in my lower rated games, because you should not focus on this if you're new to Age of Empires 2. If you're an experienced player, though, scouting HP matters so much. That and scouting information in general. In these early game engagements where players are actually rushing each other, they always bring the scout in with their army. And if you're missing as much HP, yeah, when you're down to 33 HP, that could decide these early game fights. Aztecs are also great rushing civilization, can create military units 15% faster. Eagle Scout is better than the Scout Cavalry in the Dark Age. Yeah, he's gonna try pushing some deer. Uh, but notably, Mr. Yo has, like, no map information whatsoever, and he's playing in the dark. Now, what is Stark going for? So, Four on Wood, once again, tells us that we think he's going for an early barracks. Uh, three versus Four on Wood doesn't actually give us that much information, and if anyone has any miscellaneous questions, feel free to ask me in the chat, but I'll be mostly focused on talking about the game itself. And he is very oddly going for three villagers on gold. Now, when I look at this... Usually three villagers on gold, like, this is not a standard uh, men-at-arms rush style build. You know, normally you would go for, for two on gold, actually, but he's going for three. So what does this tell me? Uh, this means that he needs the extra gold for something. So he's either, one, planning to transition into archers immediately after the men-at-arms, and he wants the extra gold stockpile, or two, he's thinking eagle scouts. And I'm going to go with eagle scouts, I think, as his option of choice. And as far as options from Mr. Yo goes... I mean, if I looked at his build order at the start, it really looked like it was going to be a pretty standard 21 villager, fast feudal age into scouts. But instead, he is actually opting for the gold mine here, where he's putting three on gold. So this tells me it's going to be a really fast feudal, actually, a 21 pop archer build from him. And it's going to go with the delayed barracks. Yeah, so the barracks is coming down now at about 9 minutes and 30 seconds. And aha. So... Here is a critical point in the game where Mr. Yo has finally sent his scout forward. And you can also generally get a decent idea of what your opponent is doing uh, when you see your their scout actually show up in your base. So Mr. Yo is clearly going to be playing on the defensive here because he's mostly been scouting around looking for resources adjacent to his own base. And then Stark is clearly going to be the aggressor. Notice how immediately, immediately, when Mr. Yo sees... Stark's barracks. He saw the flag, right? So he knows there's militia in there, so there's no... We we ain't playing games anymore. We know exactly what this fellow is up to. Uh, my music has stopped because they didn't set the playlist to loop. The struggle is just, is just real today. So, we know immediately that something is up. Of course, it's it, here comes the men-at-arms. He should be getting the men-at-arms upgrade. Uh, yeah, he's going to start it right about now. He's grabbing Loom. He's sending three villagers forward. And he's going to go with, yeah, five militia plus his Eagle Scout. And again, critically, the Scout Cavalry is already injured, and this is a really big mistake by Mr. Yoda to actually leave his Scout sitting right here and take even extra additional free damage from Stark it is devastating in these early game fights because the Vietnamese have no early game eco bonus. So this 21 pop, really slow... I mean, this is about as fast of an Archer Rush as it gets, right? But the thing is, is, is that with no eco bonus, it just... it's not nearly as fast as this Men at Arms build. And... I think that Stark is trying to take advantage of his civilization bonuses here and do everything he can to end this game as fast as humanly possible, trying to take advantage of the Vietnamese slow early game. Now, in all the AV2 HD expansions, the Men at Arms Alliance and Up did get plus one attack versus buildings, which does allow them to decimate these palisade walls. But I just love how the moment that Mr. Yo saw that Stark had infantry inside that barracks, that he like quick walled everything. Like he even got his back lumber camp. Uh, and he's building a defensive watchtower, responding 100% appropriately to this. So what's sick about this is that he's got two archers in here and the three gold miners, so he's firing the maximum amount of arrows, whereas there's only three arrows inside Stark's watchtower, and because Stark only sent three villagers forward. What this has done is this has created a sort of stalemate situation for Stark, where he's going to have to figure out what he wants to do at this point, because he can no longer threaten this gold mine. If your opponent is dropping a forward watchtower on you, you need to drop a defensive watchtower, get it down first, and then really put a position of pressure on them. Uh, what's even extra fantastic about this watchtower placement is it's next to this uh, mining camp, which means that uh, the units can't actually easily attack it at the base. They're going to have to awkwardly walk around that. And now, Mr. Yo is shifting his focus fire. Notice how he's attacking the units and trying to get some free damage in with his scout. 
instead of actually focus firing on the Watchtower. And I think he's doing this because he realizes now that the Watchtower is a lost cause. And Mr. Yo, being the god that he is, actually ungarrisons his archers immediately as the men-at-arms hit that minimum range on that Watchtower. And we see here how that men-at-arms had to path around. Mr. Yo is doing absolutely everything he can to make the best of a disastrous situation. Full well knowing that the Watchtower is very likely to go down. <laughs> Look at this. You see this, man? You see Stark putting down a house? That's pretty sick. Just to try and stall those villagers from getting around there. <laughs> They're both desperately trying to take down each other's towers. I don't know if Mr. Yo will actually lose his or not. Villagers have massive attack on his buildings. I think we're going to see some emergency repairs. This tower is going down for sure, but I, I love this series of plays here by Mr. Yo. I'm garrisoning those archers to get them out of there just in time so they don't take any damage. They can attack the men at arms at the base of that tower. It's an absolutely sick play. And he's, gonna, he's not going to lose the tower. The madman. Okay, so. Why is Stark going for this series of plays exactly? And I ah, see the second barracks. Okay, so he's clearly going for Eagle Scouts, as I thought earlier. So, so, so wh why do this? Why go for the, the Men at Arms Tower Rush? And why here specifically? So, the answer is again, the Vietnamese really slow early game civilization. Like, they do one thing, they've got one thing, and that is the that their archers, their archer range units have plus 10% HP in the feudal age, and then it goes up every age. So, you know, this gives them 33 HP in the archer, 33 HP in the skirm. That's pretty good. They, that means they usually live one extra hit from everything. That, that, the Vietnamese are just kind of shoehorned into doing that because they don't have the eco to go for scouts or anything. So, put some pressure on. What does this watchtower accomplish? It pressures this main forward gold, which Stark scouted because scouting is everything in high-level Age of Empires too. This is the perfect, perfect opening from Stark. So, seriously, incredibly well played on his part. You want to threaten this gold. Why? Because you're going to force the Vietnamese player to make skirmishers. Oh no, skirmishers have only two attack, and you know what's got you know what's got two pierce armor? Eagle Scouts. Again, five D chess. This is perfect. You see that you have your opponent has the forward gold. He's the Vietnamese. Tower that. Men at arms that. Make sure he has to make skirms, and then you just make some Eagle Scouts and just decimate him. So. Here's another little advanced tip for you, in that skirmishers take only 22 seconds to create, and the Eagle Scout actually takes 60 seconds, so that means basically for every Eagle Scout, three skirmishers come out. Skirmishers are always doing one damage to the Eagle Scout, but the Eagle Scout actually does not have an attack bonus versus archers or skirmishers or anything, so the extra three HP on them actually means that the Vietnamese do live one extra hit from the Eagle Scouts. It's pretty significant. So here we're going to see if uh, quality over quantity, which one trumps the other, because these Eagle Scouts are too tanky, or are they? So let's keep our eyes peeled on this HP. Now the good news is, though, is that Mr. Yo, again, playing this matchup correctly by putting everything he can into reclaiming that gold mine, because if he has to make skirmishers the rest of this game, that's how you lose. He doesn't really have much of a choice here. So he had to protect that gold mine at all costs, and if he didn't do everything exactly the way he did, he would have absolutely lost the game there, because he can't continue making skarms. He can't make spears. He's just going to die. And if he transitions to men-at-arms, so here's the other thing. If he transitions to men-at-arms, he's playing against the Civ with a stronger eco than him. That's going to cripple his eco. He'll never get to the Castle Age in time. And then I think that also is just a losing line of play. This line of play allows him to actually apply some pressure. Now, start getting a very, very critical upgrade here, the scale mail armor. I love to see this. This will make his, uh, his Eagle Scouts extremely resilient versus any of these ranged attacks. But fletching upgrade coming down from Mr. Yo. Again, we're dealing with Eagle Scouts or just Scouts in general. You gotta get that, uh, you gotta get that fletching upgrade. Make sure that you're uh, on par with your uh, opponent's upgrades. I'm gonna really quickly check the chat for any questions. Uh, Jingle says, Yo, Res, there's an issue with the research overlay is lagging very far behind. I have no idea why that's the case. Absolutely no idea why that is the case and cannot fix that right now, unfortunately, my friend. So, hey, look at this. Planning in advance. <laughs> look at that quick wall. I love it, I love it. So, Stark is splitting his Eagle Scouts into two groups. This is a very common tactic in high level play. He's just trying to look for some rating. He doesn't want to take a straight up fight here. Uh, because he's waiting for his Eagle Scouts to mass up. They take an eternity to create. 60 seconds is very long for the average unit in Age of Empires 2. Extremely, extremely long. So he needs to wait until he hits kind of a critical mass of this. Now, when I said that the Castle Age was super duper important, I really meant it because when you're making Eagle Scouts, they have 20 food, which does impact your Castle Age timing, but most of the cost is in the gold. It's in 50 gold. 
So, and it's a lot easier to mine gold in the early game than it is to actually amass a ton of farms. So, the Aztecs combined with their plus 15 carrying bonus means they're going to get to the castle age before you. We know this. Mr. Yo doesn't really have a way to avoid this, and I think going for archers, even though they are very weak to Eagle Scouts, is just the right play. That way he doesn't fall way too far behind in the castle age time. I, in fact, I expect Stark to uh, start advancing very, very soon. I love this outpost here as well, because Yo needs every little bit of vision that he can get uh, to know when those Eagle Scouts are coming and react accordingly, because they are split into two groups, and Stark is just looking for pickoffs, but he can't get them because the Palisade Walls are up. Yeah, Spearmen do actually have a plus one attack bonus versus Eagle's uh, Jingle Misk. So he actually could make Spearmen, but again, Spearmen, they just have really bad combat stats. He could make Spearmen. That is that is an option, but I like that he's playing to his strengths because I feel like the Spearmen are not powerful enough against the Eagles to justify how much they're going to slow down uh, the already inevitably slow Castle Age timing from Mr. Yo. So uh, I do actually prefer Mr. Yo's line of play, but I do respect the Spearmen as an option. So Stark going to grab that wheelbarrow upgrade. I think then he'll click up. So now Mr. Yo is making a bold play. So he's actually going forward. And uh, let me grab a quick sip of water. All right, excellent. So he's making a bold play, and he's going forward with his archers, uh, trying to zone Stark off of his gold. Now, he knows that he can do this because he knows that Stark has split his eagle scouts into two different groups, so it's unlikely that Stark will get a favorable engagement here and let uh, Stark bring some villagers into the fray. Is he going to bring some villagers in the fray? Let me see. Show me, show me the money. Show me the money. He also has the home field advantage, so three eagle scouts about to pop out here. Oh, he might be able to take this fight. This this one Eagle Scout has the hill advantage, so it's dealing extra damage and taking less. And and we really see here exactly just how bad archers are versus Eagle Scouts. I think the main reason why this fight's also going so poorly is there's absolutely no focus fire down uh, from Yo at all here. Yeah, see how he's spreading out the damage across the Eagle Warriors? That's how you lose that fight. You gotta focus down the Eagle Warriors individually to lower the overall DPS that they're outputting. Uh, otherwise, what you're doing is you've just eagled... You, you've... You've eagled a bunch of injured warriors, <laughs> and uh, you're still taking the maximum amount of damage possible, so if Mr. Yo is focused firing them down, maybe he could have won that fight, but no. And again, Stark just needed to wait until he had like three more Eagle Scouts, and then now his army has regrouped, and he's good to go, and Yo's pushing out yet again. Can he accomplish something? Stark on his way to the Castle Age. It's going to be a very, very slow Castle Age timing from him, but again, Yo is not there yet. He doesn't have the eco for this. He had to make a lot of skirmishes, he had to make a lot of archers, and it's just much easier to mass mine gold and get your way to the castle age, and he has a better eco, and I actually think that Stark's also been cheating. He's been cheating with a little bit of that market action. I know he's been up to no good. I know he's been up to no good. Uh, thank you, uh, Moon Sorrow, for the 16-month resub, and the Idol Villager for the $12. He says, thank you for all the fun content you put out. Happy to give something back. I really appreciate all the support, by the way, from each and every one of you on, on Twitch, Patreon, and through people donating to me. Like, thank you so much. I hope you've all seen my most recent update video. Like, the support means a lot to me, and I hope to be able to continue producing YouTube and Twitch content. So, Town Watch coming down from Mr. Yo. Again, he wants as much vision as possible. Oh, God. Comes the Eagle Scouts. Thank goodness the Eagle Scouts don't have an attack bonus versus the uh, Archer line at all, or this would be even more devastating. But now the Eagle Warrior upgrade comes out, and with it, a huge power spike in stats. So they got one at one extra Pierce armor, which means now Mr. Yo just cannot take these fights at all, and they also gain a little bit of extra movement speed, making them a truly lethal force to deal with. So how does Mr. Yo react to this? Like an absolute genius. I love this. So. This is how you play this matchup, because I don't think this matchup is good for the Vietnamese at all. In fact, I think the, the Vietnamese are designed... I don't know, I think it's really frustrating the way they're designed, because they match up so poorly versus most Mesoamerican... Well, all Mesoamerican civilizations and the Goths. They just can't deal with high pierce armor infantry units. So what do you do? Well, you fire a lot at arrows that just deal, like, one damage, basically. So you just fire a lot of shitty arrows at them. And you keep throwing garbage at the uh, Mesoamerican civ, and then hopefully... Hopefully, they catch the plague or something like that, and you can wipe out the sieve. But otherwise, otherwise, it's really hard to deal with. So I love the triple watchtower action, knowing that the main gold and the main stone are going to be huge points of contention here. And now Mr. Yo has managed to successfully stall the game into the castle. Yeah, why is my overlay so hilariously delayed? It's off by like a minute. I don't know why that is. I can't fix that, so... <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, it's like off by a minute. You guys are going to have to deal with that. I'm sorry about that. Um, 
So anyway, Crossbowman plus Bodkin Arrow upgrade out for Mr. Yo, and yeah, another reason why he's able to hold on here is that the Eagle Warrior upgrade, I think, takes... I gotta double check this. I think the Eagle... I'll do it off memory. I'm gonna say 60 seconds to research, and that the Bodkin Arrow and Crossbowman... Like, not only are those two really cheap technologies, but it's a huge power spike that just defines the metagame in general. And I think they take the same amount of time to research. I'm gonna say they both take about 35 seconds. So, there is basically a lot of downtime for the Eagle Warrior type build. Yeah, you can mass them up earlier, but you gotta research the Eagle Warrior technology and the Eagle Scouts themselves take an eternity to create. And I love that Mr. Yo, even though my overlay is hilariously off, is going for ballistics. So, in this matchup, he's playing like a terrible matchup so immaculately well. I love this, I love this. I don't know what to title this video anymore. <laughs> Something about early game villager distribution and something about how to play a terrible matchup as efficiently as humanly possible. You really, really... What, 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 it's so broken. What is this? So Mr. Yo is getting ballistics. You need ballistics when you're dealing with the unit that has, like, what, 1.2 movement speed, I think, or something like that? This thing is... Look, he's too fast. He's so fast. The animation's ridiculous. Can you imagine yourself juggling a spear like that while running? What? No, that's simply impossible. Uh, unless you're the Aztecs, I guess. So getting Ballistics, super duper essential to allow him to actually survive these fights and actually pick off these uh, these Eagle Scouts, because that does mean, these Eagle Warriors, because that does mean that they're actually more accurate against moving targets. Super essential, he's gonna put down a castle here. Whew. What do I think about this castle? Uh, I didn't get that much time to talk about upgrades, by the way, but we saw everybody get double bid axe immediately. That's super duper essential, and once again, Ballistics coming into play here, dealing like no damage at all to these Eagles, but it, at least the, the shots are landing. And so that that really, really, really matters. But everybody got double bit axe like immediately. They got bow saw immediately. Uh, they waited until they had an adequately sized economy to get wheelbarrow and handcart. You know, approximately like 30 to 40 villagers for wheelbarrow, and then handcart is around 60 ish. Ooh, here comes the ballistics. Ooh. So Eagle Warriors once again split into two groups because Stark knows that he by far has the unit advantage here. So, okay, so why would you split your eagles into two groups here? It's very important for me to break this down. So one, this group of eagles is actually enough to kill off this entire group of crossbows, which might seem insane, but he has plus two defense, and that's actually all he needs to be able to pick off these crossmen. He actually will be able to win this fight, unless you're cheating. So Mr. Yo, being the dirty cheater that he is, uh, with the static defense, this is exactly how you play this matchup. And you should do the same thing versus the Goss. He has defensive castle here. He's got like all these garrison watchtowers. He's gonna pull the eagle warriors underneath these arrows, and that will allow him to win the fight, which makes splitting these into two really, really, really risky. So then Stark has to ask himself, because I think he would see this coming, right? Like, this is not... This castle is no surprise. He knew it was there. So what Stark is doing is he's making an interesting decision. He's like, okay, if I lose this battle, I think I'm going to be able to kill enough villagers here to make it worthwhile. And here, let's see if it is. So we know he ha he's just inevitably going to lose this fight. Because it doesn't matter how much pierce armor you have and you're taking four arrows a hit. And he's, yeah, just the evil warriors are just absolutely melting. The town center, again, firing all these shots. The watchtower is dealing tons of damage. He's losing a lot of eagle warriors. And he, again, will end up being defeated in that battle. And now, instead, Stark, just going for the back line. Actually, he split his eagles into three. Wow, yeah. Really trying to just get into the... Now, the woodline if he can, and look for any sort of pickoffs. But the way that Mr. Yo has structured his base, there are very few, like, vulnerable villagers. Like, Stark is so good at this game that he's actually managed to identify, like, two rogue villagers over here. Not so fast! And he is going to lose these gold miners, even this one that was, like, rallied over there. Um, but really, uh, Stark just doesn't have a good opportunity to do some raiding. He's really trying to do that. Actually, I think he could take this fight straight on if he wants to. And yes, he does. See, look how good these players are. This is why I love casting expert replays. Look, they, what, when I say something, they just do it. They always do it. It's great. Ooh, okay, so I guess he already got thumb rings. So that's that's actually very significant as well. Because, again, you need all these upgrades when you're dealing with these high pierce armor infantry units. Uh, Stark, I think, got arson earlier, too, if I recall. And that, again, is really necessary to break through these these quick walls that are protecting him. But we're in a really weird position here where Stark feels like he just can't take a straight-up fight because Mr. Yo is cheating with all these static defenses and his quick walling and his housing development. Ooh. Uh, he might be finally overextending, though, with these crossbows. I, I, I promise you this matchup is, is so really bad, unbelievably bad for the, the Vietnamese, that this small group of Eagle Warriors can actually pick off these crossbows, kind of. 
if they're not microed very well, and it looks like actually they are microed extremely well by Mr. Josie. Now he's doing the focus firing thing and the stutter stepping thing, but he's still getting bodied. Like, that's the funny thing. Like, look how little damage they do. So, another thing that might be on your mind. Uh, by the way, thank you, Grandy, for the $5. It says, two streams in many days, carrying on the AOE2 glory days, one stream at a time. Much love on everyone's behalf. Thank you. And thank you, Washi, for the sub, and Faust for the 11-month resub. So why make Rattan Archers? I bet a lot of you are thinking... Mr. Yo, more like Mr. No, why why Rattan Archers? This is an anti anti archer unit resonance. What 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 is this? Zero pierce armor versus this clearly anti archer unit. It's because it has one extra attack. It's actually that it's actually that simple. And you need to be able to deal one extra damage. And the tan archers actually used to have a very tiny attack bonus for symmetry units, which I think was super necessary to actually balance the Civ out. It was really fallen out of competitive play entirely after that nerf. Uh, but the Rutan Archer is still better than a Crossbowman here, and he's also just making it because he's got the castle anyway, and he needed to build it here to protect this, again, extremely contentious location in the map. And the Rutan Archers are just, uh, I think the best way to describe them is they are less shitty versus the Eagle Warriors than the Crossbowmen are. And sometimes, sometimes you have to take the less shitty option. This hill is both a blessing and a curse. It's, uh, it's a blessing in that this town center is dealing a little bit extra damage and taking a little bit less because of the hill advantage, but also a curse in that it's really difficult for Mr. Yo to defend against it uh, because he's probably attacking from the low ground. And as we've learned from watching the Star Wars prequels, that is usually fatal. Same thing with defending this, this housing line. I actually like that Stark is going for the houses instead in this case. Again, just trying to do as much damage as he can. This is a mistake, though, by the way. Look how clumped these Rattan Archers are. I don't think he should send these uh, music warriors out here. I actually think that taking down the houses is worthwhile to do, if you can, because you're just dealing some damage, right? And what Stark is doing, which I think is the most important, is just taking advantage of the map control that he has. When you go for these mobile units like Eagle Warriors, you have all this map control, and as a result, you get to you get to mine this stone mine with complete impunity. He could even mine this stone mine. Look, it's easy. But, oh God. I love casting expert games. I want to do this more often because when I just say something, it's it's amazing. I feel like a <laughs> I feel like a magician, man. They just do it. They just do it. He's got map control, so he can mine this gold mine. He's already put the town center foundation there. My my man, my man. Marry me, Stark. All right. So here comes some, here comes the mango nails, which actually just promptly get bodied by the repetitive arrow fire from the watchtower. So yeah, that's not so good. So arson eagle warriors. Oh, he's just gonna kill the town center. That's so alpha. I like that. I like that. Did he walk those mangonels all the way over here? Ah, uh, the mangonels. I mean, I like the decision to make them. I think that Stark is realizing that the situation is slowly getting out of hand, and he just can't take any straight-up fights because, again, Mr. Yo is king of static defense. Oh, he's finally found some villagers to pick up. The question is, I, I really wonder, though, like, does Stark care that he can't take up these fights and that he's actually letting the Rattan Archers get masked up? Like, does that really matter? Uh, I need to think about this for a second. Um, I'm still a little sick, so pardon me for the, the brief interruptions as I, I grab some water. So, okay. Let's think about this from a strategic analysis standpoint. <sighs> Who was winning? Does... Okay, so he do, he takes down the town center. I like that Stark is doing this. Stark is throwing away his units like crazy. Like, absolutely crazy. I mean, it's not re that reflected in the KD, but he it is a bit reflected there. You know, he's lost over 35 units essentially for free. And he's allowing Mr. Yo to mass up Rattan Archers. But, okay, I don't think he cares. I actually think Mr. Yo is in deep trouble. I know he's 600 points ahead, but I, I think he's in, in seriously, legitimately deep trouble. Kanye Twist says Stark's already married. What? Oh no! Tell me that. Tell me it ain't so. Well, maybe he'll re maybe he'll reconsider after watching my cast. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so Stark, master mobility, <sighs> Mr. Yo, make an offensive play. Okay. So anyway, I, I wanted to mention earlier that I actually think the that the Mr. Yo is losing. I know that might not seem like it, but I I've played enough Vietnamese to to know what it's like to lose to the Aztecs. <laughs> it just happens. So, so I think that Mr. Yo is actually losing. I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the case here, and and the reason being is that I don't think Stark cares that he's throwing away these units. All he needs to do is just kill a bunch of villagers, and you know what? He's doing that. He has a very slight villager lead of 11. That's pretty good. 
He can afford to throw away these Eagle Warriors. Why? Because all he's ultimately allowing Mr. Yo to do is mass up guys in silly hats. And you know what? I don't think that these hats are as threatening as these cosplayers. I don't. I think that the Vietnamese have such a limited tech tree that once Stark gets to Imp, he can just get elite Eagle Warriors and just clean up this army. I think that the Aztecs have so many things in their arsenal, like Siege Underdurs, for example, they can just clean up this army. I don't think it's that bad that Mr. Yo is able to mass things up and Stark is throwing away his units like this. I think it's deliberate. In fact, <laughs> look at Stark. Taking advantage of map control. God, I love watching good players. You keep doing right things, both of you. Both of you keep this up. I like this. So what should Mr. Yo actually do here? Well, I, I hope he has a plan. And I don't know what he's going to do here, but... But this Rattan Archer thing has no longevity to it. It just does not. So, we'll have to see, because the Vietnamese don't get hand cannon ears. They had champions without Blast Furnace, and they didn't before until I made, like, a huge case about that in development. I was like, yo, you can't release a sieve like this without without hand cannon ears, no Blast Furnace, no champions. What are you gonna use? Two-handed swordsman without without Blast Furnace as a way to deal with, like, Eagle Warriors and Huskarls? <laughs> <laughs> on a sieve with no eco bonus, you crazy? So, uh, thankfully though, uh, Susan did make that change, and I'm extremely thankful for that, so at least they have champions. The champions that have Blast Furnace are not very good versus the Goths anyway. They're okay. You, you kind of have to make them. Uh, and they're not that good against these elite Eagle Warriors soon to be, with plus eight attack eventually. Not so great. Uh, they're okay. The question is, should Mr. Yo be making champions? I don't know. Oh, shit. Pardon me. Take a look at this, my friends. I, I do believe we are in the presence of a madman. Is this the game plan? Oh, no. Does this work? Okay, well, I, I guarantee... Okay, I promise you this does not work versus the Goss. This is actually just bad versus the Goss. Because they get to massive halberdiers, which just eat battle elephants for breakfast. And uh, the Huskarl plus halberdier army comp is so much more cost-efficient than... Whatever your shitty battle ele oh, ooh, that's a great shot. Whatever your shitty battle elephant comp is, ooh, that's another pretty good shot. That, this guy's disgusting. Are you guys sure Stark is married? Cause that was ah, oh, oh, that was really good, man. That was good shit. God. Ah, uh, this does not work versus Goss at all. Um, anyone who thinks it does hasn't played the matchup at all because the battle elephants just they're just not cost efficient at all versus the army comp. You're losing so much gold. The Vietnamese battle elephants are some of the worst in the game because they don't get husbandry and Chatras is actually just a weak technology. Plus 30 HP does not offset the lack of blast furnace and the lack of husbandry. It just does not. Chimera are some of the strongest battle elephants in the game because of their bonus movement speed and that they have real they have real bonuses. Now granted. I'm thinking about this right now. How much does this uh, actually matter against a sieve that doesn't get halberd deers, right? Uh, that is the question. So, I don't know how this game ends, but my heart tells me it, it ends poorly for Mr. Yo, but we'll see. Like, I don't, I don't know if this works. Is this better than champions? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> That's how you know they're weak, hungry halberd deer. I was going to plus 60 versus elephants. I oh oh yeah, because they get the cavalry bonus as well. No no, you're absolutely correct. So that was a that was a mistake on my part, hungry halberd deer. I forgot that the uh, the war elephant also takes bonus damage from the cavalry. Similarly to a cavalry archer, it actually takes the bonus damage from cavalry units and the bonus damage from elephant units. They're actually classified as both. So the bonus is actually significant. So I I, I was actually incorrect there. Uh, the bonus itself, I'm actually not sure what the difference is between pikemen and halberd deers, but it's Actually, probably very significant, uh, now that I think about it. So, this means that I actually like the decision by Mr. Yo to go for War Elephants, because the Pikeman is a lot worse versus the War Elephant, because the bonus, the attack bonus versus Cavalry and versus Elephants are applied simultaneously. So even though the difference in the Elephant attack bonus is 3, the difference in Cavalry attack bonus is like 10 plus or something like that, which matters a lot. It does. So, and uh, the poor mobility on the battle offense could be potentially problematic for Mr. Yo in dealing with the elite eagle warriors, but we'll see. I mean, I wonder how much he's going to commit to these battle offense. I'm just wondering, like, does champion, do champions make more sense here? 
I actually think champions are the better option here. I just don't know. I think that Stark... I mean, one, he can make a couple monks if he really wants to. Yeah, and he's our first player to the Imperial Age. Mr. Yo is not that far behind him, even though I know the... <laughs> even though I know the overlay is off. He's actually just... Yeah, he's like right behind him, which is good, which means this game is extremely close, and it's difficult to tell who's going to win. But really, he's got like, what, two battle offenses army? Is he going to commit to this? Battle offense is also really expensive to upgrade. Yeah, he's going to commit to this. That's such an interesting ploy. I wonder if it'll pay off, because I really don't know. He's, he's banking a lot of money. What's it for? Is it for Elite Retain Archer, or is it for the Elite Battle Elephant upgrade? He has to make that decision. What is it? I, I don't know what he's getting, because... <laughs> uh, the uh, tech tree's all messed up, so... Regardless... We are going to see the fight on the left side of the map. Well, some simultaneous ratings going on with these elite Eagle Warriors. This is, again, one of the major downsides of this matchup that the Vietnamese just really struggle. I mean, this Civ also doesn't have masonry and architecture, so you're just asking to get bodied by these Mezzo Civs that just come in there with their elite Eagle Warriors, and they, they blow up your base. It, it makes them even worse versus the Goss as well. I mean, that's why I really... What? What, the, what is this fucking gate? <laughs> nice. No, that's why I really don't like the way the Civ is designed, honestly, because they they created a Civ without masonry, without arson, that has, like, well, at least sharing is caring, right? Isn't this so cute? Well, how, wait, how can Stark be married if right now he's currently cheating with Mr. Yo? Uh, they're sharing gold, they're touching gold mines right now. That's not, that is not appropriate. I don't know, they just managed to design a Civ that just has, like, no answer to the... <laughs> There's no answer like four civs in the game. Now, granted, there are a lot of new civs that have really oppressive matchups, like the, uh... Um, I suppose the Indians versus Huns can be a little rough late game, but, like, the Berbers versus the Mongols has to be one of the worst civ matchups I've ever seen. And I, and I don't like games that feel like they're matchup dependent. I really like it when it feels like every civ in the game. And it used to be back in AOC that, minus, like, two matchups, every civ in the game had a chance, and even the ones that were bad at least still had an eco lead. But the Vietnamese, I mean, they, they have no eco lead at all, and then what do they do in the late game? Well, they forfeit all the map control, they start getting swarmed, and then what do you do? Do you make battle elephants? Oh, he's not even committing to this. He's not even committing to this because he doesn't have the economy for this. Ay ay ay. So this is just, yeah. Yeah, now he's falling apart at the seams. Look at this castle HP, it's so sad, it's so sad. Low energy, tiny hands, just can't deal with it. Oh no, is my video going to get demonetized because of that reference? <sighs> Res is going to be even poor, boys. So, what should Mr. Yo be doing? Uh, well, right now, at this point, he has no choice but to commit uh, ret Elite Retain Archers. And this is why I really feel like the plus one attack bonus for Zimetry was necessary to make this Civ viable. It just was. Like, I don't see how this Civ is viable without that. I don't. Uh, look how he's 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 forced into doing this, and four plus four pierce armor. That's eight. At least the elite rattan archer has eleven attacks. So you're actually dealing three damage a pop to a sixty HP unit. It's not so bad. But the main point is is that there, this sieve has no masonry and no architecture, and these elite eagle warriors have plus eight attack, and they have arson, which gives them plus two bonus versus buildings. So what's going to happen is that the Vietnamese are a civ that is completely incapable of defending themselves, even though Mr. Yo is trying his best to defend himself with stack defense, the Vietnamese don't get that. And they don't have, and they have these like poor archer units that just can't deal with high pierce, they just can't deal with high pierce armor units in general at all. Uh, and Mr. Yo, since he's going to get raided all game, which he has been getting raided all game by Stark, will never have enough money to actually afford the battle offense that he wanted to create initially, and instead has to make light cav. I think he's dead, boys. <laughs> this is a really, really good game to watch, though. Ah. Okay, I guess, I guess they're not friends anymore. That was kind of cute, though. <laughs> yeah, he never got to make the battle elephants. I mean, especially... I think it's inevitable that the battle elephant gets nerfed at some point anyway. At least the elite battle elephant does. And then once that does... Because the elite battle elephant is way too strong in team games. And I, and I feel like Forgotten Empires is aware of this. Uh... Well, as soon as the Elite Battle Elephant gets nerfed, which I think will happen eventually, it might not, uh, then the Vietnamese are even more screwed because they have absolutely nothing versus this type of Elite Eagle Warrior play. Uh, so, I don't know, this matchup is uh, is just not a good one for, for Mr. Yo. I think he played this very well, uh, and, he, and he maybe had like the smallest window of opportunity at probably around 40 minutes in or something like that to, to try a different game plan. But it's so hard, because look, look, he's making all the right plays. You see how he sandwiched his units here between these two houses, and he's clumped them up as much as possible. 
and then he's focus firing down the Eagle Warriors. I mean, again, Mr. Yo is playing this really, really well. He just doesn't have the tools in his arsenal to deal with this. Uh, this is just falling, this is basically just completely falling apart. Uh, New Buster says, how do you feel about the Vietnamese playing in a team game? Uh, I still don't like them. <laughs> They're a situational civilization. I think their biggest asset is that they give Imperial Skirmishers to everybody, but I don't like team bonus units in general, because I think those are impossible to balance. I mean, this Civ certainly has its place in team games, because you can have other Civs on your team to actually shore up their weaknesses, and I think that's when the Vietnamese are actually disgusting as a civilization, really annoying to play against, is uh, in like a 4 v 4 team game, let's say in like Black Forest, and they're super boomed up. Uh, this is a Civ that is about as binary as it gets, but what if, what if you had something on your team, some sort of civilization that just absolutely destroyed those high pierce armor infantry raiding civilizations? I mean, even Wode Raiders actually kick the Vietnamese's butt. So if you just have some, like, really strong anti-infantry civs on your team, then the Vietnamese death ball is really difficult to deal with. And, and you know, that's why the civ is very heavily balanced the way it is, uh, lacking masonry architecture. Uh, so that way... In those late game team games, it, it, they were less oppressive. And, you know, that's also why the Rattan Archer has received nerfs and, and why the Civ is so bloody slow. It's just kind of designed for team games, but in one versus ones, it, it, the Civ really struggles. If I wasn't doing this live, and that's why I usually like to cast replays not live, and I'd go back and I'd pinpoint the exact area for your own reference where Mr. Yo had a potential different option, but, you know, in his, in his shoes, I think I would have made exactly the same line of plays as him. I'm just wondering if there was a way that he could have actually uh, turned this around, because there absolutely was. Uh, if he went for champions, would he have won the game? It's really difficult to know, because the Vietnamese champions without Blast Furnace are pretty weak, and it takes a really long time to get those upgrades out, right? And you're still in a situation where the Vietnamese and Civ are just fundamentally really immobile, and you're still giving Stark a lot of map control. And I think then Stark can transition into Arbalest or something like that, I suppose if he does, then your Rattan Archers do destroy him, but I guess like the champions are too slow, and I think the battle elephants are too slow as well, and and I don't just mean from a move speed standpoint, I also mean from like a getting all the upgrades out standpoint, so I don't know if, if Mr. Yo, I think the champions plus Rattan Archers were the way to go, but he just never had the money to do so, and, and that just goes major credit to Stark for putting on so much pressure throughout the entire course of the game to keep Mr. Yo's eco crippled. Because I think if Mr. Yo ever had the opportunity to get Elite Battle Elephant and or Champions, I think Champions would have been better. Because uh, I think the Pikeman option, it's just much easier for Stark to mix in Pikeman because he already has the barracks for them and he already has all the upgrades. So that's, that's why I think that the champion is just a better option, because it forces Stark to build like 50 archery ranges, and then he has to get all the techs for him, which he doesn't have, uh, and that buys you a lot of time, which hopefully makes it for all the time that you spent making champions, and that creates that back and forth, the dynamic in Age of Empires 2 I like so much. Uh, but he never had time to either get Elite Battle Elephant or Champions, because his eco is just getting raided so, so very hard, and... Yeah, it's just great play there by Stark, just taking advantage of all the Vietnamese's weak points, and just a really well played, like, this is how you play your Civ matchup. Uh, answer any quick questions. Thank you so much, uh, Juan Francisco, for pledging $2 on Patreon. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Sergeant Peppers, for $10. Says, hey, man, thanks for, this, thanks for the streams. Stay strong, you demand. Really appreciate it. Uh, I may have missed a couple other ones. Faust, 11 months, thank you. Grandy for $5. Oh, I did thank Grandy. Cool. Uh, may have missed Moon Sorrow sub. All right, yeah, I really appreciate the support, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, as I am, you know, going through a transition period as I look for a you know, new job, or it would be really nice if I could do YouTube and Twitch full time. That would be the dream. But uh, I'm gonna need a lot of support. I'm gonna need uh, people going out there spreading the word about my stream um, and and my YouTube channel and just a lot of support in general. And I'm also going to need to produce the best content I can, so. <laughs> Felian says, Russia title the video, why I don't like how the Vietnamese resigned. Uh, maybe that would be a title for a different video, although I could do that for this video. Because uh, I didn't talk about it enough, I suppose. Uh, Arnold, I live in California. Welcome to the stream, Turnspit, good to see ya. Good to see ya. I'm going to be doing another game after this, so stay tuned, by the way, stay tuned. 
Uh, Barbarous King says, what would you give the Vietnamese? Hand cannons or blast furnace or both? So here's the, here's the tricky thing. Uh, design is very difficult in Age of Empires 2 due to the uh, limited mechanics of the game. And this is why I hope that Age of Empires 4 is like economically incredibly similar, but militarily they really expand the engine and allow for things like damage over time effects on units. Uh, maybe like armor piercing shots, for example. Like we kind of have that with attack bonuses, but I think you can expand on it, you know, really create some interesting military units. Uh, maybe you have like a military unit with uh, some sort of like targeted... Uh, like some sort of aura or something like that. I don't know. There, there are cool things you can do. So here's the problem with giving the the Vietnamese hand cannoneers. I, while I think it makes sense for them to have hand cannoneers, their hand cannoneers would be as good as the Turks ones, or they'd be almost as good. They'd have the same HP. So that's why they don't have them. Um, and again, you know, it was a really tough thing when we were going through the design process of the Vietnamese. Uh, was you know, can we give them hand cannoneers? Well, then they're the same as the Turks essentially. So can't really do that. Uh, Cision initially when designing the Vietnamese really didn't want them to have like strong melee units, which is why they don't have Blast Furnace, but I think that the Civ is uh, actually just not fun to play without Blast Furnace. I just don't. Uh, I think that their Light Cavalry without Blast Furnace, they're just so easily countered. The Civ is very, very binary. The Elite Battle Elephant really needs the Blast Furnace upgrade, or Chatras needs a serious buff. Even if you buff Chatras, I still think this Civ doesn't work without Blast Furnace. It just doesn't. Like, they need Blast Furnace champions, uh, or I think they get bodied hard by the Aztecs. And I haven't even gone down the rabbit hole of, you know, then Stark's like, you just activated my trap card. He puts down the castle, starts making the Jaguar Warriors, and then you got a stew cooking. So, I, I think that uh, I'd give them Blast Furnace. I just don't think this Civ works without Blast Furnace, but, yeah, difficult to say. <laughs> at least Mr. Yo gets hoardings. Let's check out the achievements. I'm working on some production quality for the stream, so in the meantime, you get to deal with this. But eventually, that transition is going to be smooth as butter. Thank you so much, Pack Lovio, for pledging another two dollars via Patreon. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'd also just give the—I mean, I think giving the Rattan Archer back its plus one versus symmetry would also really help because we saw how Mister Yo was just. Like, he, champions weren't even on the table for him. I mean, they kind of were. There was a brief opportunity where he had to maybe be able to make champions or elite battle elephants. A very small opportunity, but he ended up going for elite retain archers, and he, and he felt like he was kind of forced to do so. And the fact that the elite retain archer no longer has a plus one bonus for symmetry means that he had absolutely no chance there. It's like he barely had an opportunity at all to, to make champions. And I think that... Uh, Giving them plus one versus infantry, just like the Elite Plumed Archer, doesn't make the matchup, like, good for them at all. The Elite Plumed Archer still gets destroyed by the Goss. It's just something small that the Vietnamese need to be playable, I think. Um, and I'm disappointed it was taken away, personally. This is my personal opinion. Uh, Moth and Bass, have you ever used Imp Skirms? They're strong? Yeah, they are really strong. I think they're... I think that all team bonus units are... Uh, potentially problematic balance-wise. They're insanely strong. Uh, I think the Vietnamese civilization just really struggle in a one-on-one -on -one outside of, like, some matchups. Just because they, all they do is they just have really insane archer ranged units. Um, and that's it. And as a result, they're they're so easily counterable. It, it really feels like Mr. Yo was always fighting an uphill battle. And that Stark had the high ground. Like, he, he let Mr. Yo have a spot on the council, but he never granted him the rank of master. Uh, I do think, though, that the Vietnamese have some, you know, good, interesting design aspects to them, of course. You know, quite a few of them. You know, I'm glad that all the Rise of Raja Civs have Halberdiers, for example. I'm glad that the Vietnamese have all the late-game eco upgrades. Yeah, that was a very conscious design decision um, on the part of Cision. I'd give them all the late-game eco upgrades. Very, very smart. Uh, I think that they need all of them to remain remotely relevant as a Civ. Uh, but, you know, no... And, and yeah, not giving them uh, masonry and architecture is interesting, and I think that that would work if the Civ had Blast Furnace. <laughs> uh, or, or something, like if they had their plus one attack back versus infantry on the Rattan Archer. It doesn't make the matchup good, it just means they're dealing two damage versus Husk Girls while they're getting absolutely bodied beyond reason, getting blown to pieces, uh, rather than one. Uh, which helps, but it does not swing the matchup, and I, I still think that the, you can counter them quite nicely. Um, just plus one. 
Uh, Venom says, love you, Resonance 22. Thank you, man. A Blast Furnace uh, Tokaraka, it, it makes a big impact o overall on the entire civilization. It's a bad little offense that get kited way too easily without husbandry, and uh, their halberdiers get wrecked, their like, cavalry get wrecked, their cavaliers get wrecked. It, it, the Blast Furnace is not... It's, it's a big buff. It, it helps. It helps. <laughs> I I do think it would make them uh, a much better civilization. But to be honest, though, like uh, having a civ like this with no eco upgrades, with no eco bonus in the early game, it's just going to be hard to make the civ viable without making it like too oppressive late game. But I think blast furnace would help. You know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Johnny Glitter says, "Love the game. I was going to start playing Age of Empire. Uh, Age of, uh, I was going to start playing Age of the Kings one. Keep up the good work. I'm going to start following, and watching when I'm not doing my stream. Well, I appreciate it, Johnny Glitter. Hope to see you in the future. Hope to see you on YouTube as well. I mean, it's an interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting discussion. Uh, I don't like the Imperial Skirmishers as a team bonus either, but that's a topic for another video. I think it's very difficult to balance that. Uh, perhaps the Civ just doesn't need Imperial Skirmishers like and Rattan Archers. Like the Civ is just really good at a couple things and is super obnoxious in late game team games. But and then uh, it just it's too binary, I suppose. Interesting though, interesting. Two pack lives. Thank you for the subscription and thank you Sacred Sacred Dragon for the subscription as well. Okay, so uh, I think that's the end of this particular cast. How am I doing for time on that one? Not so bad, not so bad. And uh, I'm going to do another game after this. I am not going to cast the another expert game after this. I'm going to cast a viewer game. And so for those of you watching live, we're going to hop over to AOE2HD in just a minute. And I am going to host a lobby, do a drawing, and I'm going to offer some advice for any sort of newer to mid-tier players. So the goal here is to kind of differentiate my content between... Uh, more advanced stuff like these expert games like this and then also just helping players move up to the next level basically and get started and i hope that that helps out a lot and with your support uh hopefully the channel will grow and things will do well as always i'm looking forward to your feedback and i hope you all have seen my most recent update video I'll be right back i'm going to take a brief break uh, as i am still recovering from my cold and yeah gonna do some community games after this stay tuned if you enjoyed my style of commentary, then I highly encourage you to check out all of my miscellaneous social pages. So, please do check them out, and thank you as well uh, for those of you who take the time to support the content you do for games beyond just AOE2. Makes a big difference. <laughs> King Smiley, thank you for the penny. Appreciate it. We'll be back shortly. Stay tuned.